Hello, this is Chaitanya Bailwell. In this video, I'm going to walk you through part two of the article, which is uh, dealing with a simple introduction to neural network backpropagation. The main article is in my blog, whose link I will have in the video description. In part one of the video, we looked at deriving backpropagation for a simple neural network, which had one input layer having one neuron, one hidden layer also with one neuron, and one output layer with one neuron. As you can see, this neural network does not have any uh, sigmoid function. So in part two, we use a similar neural network except the sigmoid function has been added for both hidden and output layers. So here you look at the same neural network that we looked in part one except the sigmoid function has been added. So again, we have one input, one hidden layer with one neuron and one output layer with one neuron. This term RH represents the output of the hidden layer after applying the sigmoid function to this term over here. And RO is the output after applying the sigmoid function to this term over here. So here are the actual mathematical representations of RO and RH. So what we are interested in is to find the rate of change of the error E in terms of the output weights as well as the hidden weights. So first let's calculate uh, the rate of change based on the output weight represented by W. O. So E is the error which is defined as uh, difference between the actual value of the training data output represented by T minus the, the predicted or the computed output from the neural network represented by RO squared divided by 2. So one of the fundamental uh, rules that we use, uh, which we also used in part 1, is the chain rule which for a partial derivative mainly says that the partial derivative of x with respect to y is equal to partial derivative of x with respect to z times partial derivative of z with respect to y. So let's apply the chain rule to this term over here. So here we assume z is this term t minus r o, x is equal to z square and y is equal to the output weight w o. So putting this term together, we still use this constant over here. So we do a partial derivative of x with respect to y. Again, expanding this based on the chain rule leads to this term, putting the value of x as z square, and then putting the value of z, which is t minus r o, leads us to this. So clearly, this term over here the this is equivalent to a derivative of or a partial derivative of x with respect to x or the uh, excuse me the partial derivative of x square with respect to x which is basically equal to 2x so here we put this term here over here and this term remains as before and it's further solved going down below so here t minus r root with respect to w o is equivalent to this term where we put the value of r o. So r o if you see in the neural network is just applying the sigmoid function to this term over here. So we have used this value of uh, sigmoid of w o times r h with respect to w o. Again splitting these terms up it becomes t, rate of change of t with respect to w o and the rate of change of sigmoid of this function with respect to w o. Now t is a constant so we will put its value as 0 and here we are going to further expand this term and um, apply the chain rule in doing so. So assuming z is equal to w o times r h, x is equal to sigmoid of z and y is equal to w o this term, which we also use in equation 1.3, is expanded to this. Now, um, just a little recap on the sigmoid function. The sigmoid function x is defined as this, and its derivative is 
sigmoid of x times 1 minus sigmoid of x. So again, applying this in equation 1.4 leads us, uh, this is the same term that we have used over here. So sigmoid WO times RH times uh, so WO or the rate of change of WO times RH with respect to WO is equal to this term. So this is equivalent to sigmoid of X with respect to X and we know the value here. So X is equal to WO times RH here. So putting the value this term and this term is essentially the same. And WO times RH we take RH house because it's a constant. It's not impacted by any change in WO. And the rate of change of WO with respect to WO is essentially one. That's one of the basic rules in differential calculus. So going back to equation 1.3, which we defined over here, we know this term, which we had used here, we can expand it to the rate of change of sigmoid of WO times RH by rate with respect to WO and the value has been calculated here. Then again we put this value in equation 1.2. Equation 1.2 is equal to this. Uh, it's trying to find this term. Here it uses the rate of change of T minus RO with respect to WO whose value we have already computed here. So we place that value. Now going back to the main derivative of E with respect to WO, we just put the value of E. This is the term we get, and this is the similar to the term that we have computed above using the chain rule. Now we have determined the rate of change of E with respect to the output layer weight WO. Now let's do the same to determine the rate of change of E with respect to the hidden layer weight uh, represented by WH. So again, putting the value of E, uh, it remains the same except uh, we are trying to find this value with respect to WH. Applying this chain rule as before with respect to WH this time leads us to equation 2.2. Now we try to find this term it is equivalent to the sigmoid of WO times RH with respect to WH. Now let us uh, find this term again applying the chain rule. So if we assume Z is equal to WO times RH and X is equal to the sigmoid of Z, this leads us to this term over here. Now again revisiting the differentiation of a sigmoid function x with respect to x is equal to the sigmoid of x times 1 minus sigmoid of x. So in equation 2.4 let's apply this rule. Here we get sigmoid of w times rh 1 minus sigmoid of w rh. So this term is the value of this term whereas this term here remains as is. So let us compute this term now. So again, the rate of change of W is times RH with respect to WH, we substitute the value of RH, which we know is sigmoid of WH times I, where I is the input. So this leads us to this term here. We take the WO out because it can be considered as constant that is not impacted by WH. This is equal to the rate of change of sigmoid of WHI with respect to WH. Now let's further expand this term using the chain rule. So here let's assume Z is equal to WH times I and X is equal to sigmoid of X. Expanding based on the chain rule leads to a term here where we are trying to find the rate of change of sigmoid of WHI with respect to WHI. So again, in this case, we can apply the same rule as we apply for a regular differentiation of the sigmoid function with respect to x. So here x is equal to wh times i. So we can replace this 
this is the term equal to sigmoid of x times 1 minus sigmoid of x and putting this term here we take i out so it becomes rate of change of wh with respect to wh which essentially is equal to 1 so again from equation 2.7 uh, we put this value of rate of change of whi with respect to wh in equation 2.6 so this is the term that we get from equation 2.7 oh sorry from equation 2.6 i will well this equation should be 2.8 uh, and then applying this in equation 2.5 to compute this term we know this term from this previous equation and this is the term that we get going further up this we need to compute this term which is zero minus the term here which we compute in this equation here and finally we get the term here and this was the uh, main term that we are looking at which is uh, the rate of change of t minus ro squared with respect to wh this is another typo here which will be wh so this is the term that we get uh, finally the rate of change of e with respect to wh is this term with uh, respect to wh expanding and putting the value of this term over here that we had computed and placed it over here we just substitute this value finally leading us to this main result which is what we are interested in which shows the rate of change of e with respect to wh so the our main work is done now we know how changing both the weights will either reduce or decrease the error our main goal is to reduce the error so we calculate this value delta w for the output vote, uh, output neur neuron multiply it by a learning rate and the rate of change of e by with respect to the output weight now here this term mainly determines the direction that we need so but we still use the value that it is computed in some other neural networks we can use the r prop function to do the same so this is the term that we get for wo so we do the new value of wo is the old value plus the delta value that is calculated here similarly we apply the value for the hidden layer weight and then we can apply either stochastic or the standard batch gradient descent uh, you may also want to take a look at our prop uh, method which is a much better uh, neural network it's an improvement uh, essentially the principle is the same except in our prop we just use the sign of this and then we increment or decrement just purely based on the learning rate which is helps and good uh, several times because this term in a few cases can be pretty large so you are updating your wage weights by a pretty large value which has a risk of jumping over a, a global minima the minimum error space and if you jump too high you will never be able to get to it so our pop is a much uh, more efficient method that most neural networks use today that's it for this uh, video uh, next, I will also take a review how convolutional neural networks work and further on explain how we can do a back propagation for a convolutional neural network. Thank you for watching.